What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to design and tune a ported subwoofer enclosure. When getting a subwoofer, one thing you will need to go with it is an enclosure. The reason you need a sturdy box for a sub is because the sound waves coming off the back of the cone can somewhat cancel out the ones coming off the front, so putting the subwoofer in a properly built enclosure allows it to be much more efficient, which will give you a lot more bass. So if you are watching this and wondering if you should build your own or just buy a pre-made box, I would say if you are pressed for time, don't have the right tools and just want to get the bass bumping, a pre-made box is probably the way to go. You can also buy subwoofers that are already pre-loaded in a box and ready to install. But designing and building your own custom box around your exact subwoofer can make it sound a lot better compared to a generic pre-made box. You may even be able to save money if you already have the right tools and of course you will pick up some valuable skills along the way. I'll teach you how to actually build one in another video. But starting out for the design you're going to want to make sure whatever you're about to build will fit into wherever you want to put it. I will be installing this single Rockford Fosgate Punch P3 10 inch subwoofer packed in a ported enclosure in the trunk of this slob. I'm pretty sure it will fit no problem but if you're building something bigger and or have a smaller trunk and you're not sure if it'll fit, I recommend getting a rough measure of the trunk's depth, width, and height then jotting it down. Also not a bad idea to measure the actual opening of the trunk as well. Next you will want to decide if you want to make a sealed or a ported box. Sealed boxes generally are easy to design and build, take less material to make, and are more compact. They deliver good sound quality but are not as loud. On the other hand, ported boxes take up a bit more room, are more complicated to design and build, but will give you more bass and can be tuned for more sound quality or SPL depending on what you want. I'm going to be designing this with graph paper, a ruler, a compass, and a pen. I would recommend using a pencil in case you mess up, but I'm just using a pen so you can see better. There are also many other ways you can design this, but this is just how I usually do it. Let me know if you would like me to make a tutorial on how to do this on Google SketchUp. Next, you will want to find some important recommended specs for the enclosure. Rockford Fosgate included these in the instructions, and most subwoofers should include this information. It's also not a bad idea to at least stay close to these specs if you can, unless you have a reason to change them. The internal area for this recommended port enclosure for this Rockford 10 inch is 1.5 4 cubic feet. The tuning frequency is 40 hertz, height is 12 inches, width is 20, and the depth is 14. And this is with using 3 quarters inch thick material. They recommend using a round port which should have a 4 inch diameter and a 14 inch length. I personally have always used rectangular ports so that's what I'm going to be using on this build. But using a circular port will make it easier to build and design. All you would have to do is get a PVC pipe to match that spec and you're good to go. But since I'm going to be changing the port design, I'm going to go ahead and change the recommended box dimensions just a tad. I will be using some free subwoofer calculators that you can find on the 12volt.com. I will leave a link in the description. Under the volume calculator for rectangle enclosures, I will put 20 for the width, 14 for the depth, and for the height I'm going to add an inch so I will enter 13. This is because the walls for the slot port will take up a little extra space compared to the round port and will give the diameter of the sub a little bit more room to be bolted on. I'll put 0.75 inch thickness for the material and this will give us about 1.54 cubic feet compared to the 1.4 that they recommend it. Before I calculate the port, let's go ahead and start designing. First thing, I like to jot down what subwoofer it's for and some important specs about the subwoofer like cutout diameter and mounting depth. Then the basic specs for the box I'm building just so I have everything in one place. Since this will be drawn to scale, one square will equal one inch cubed in real life. For the front view, I'll start out by drawing a rectangle 20 by 13. I like to have the top and sides overlap with the front because it's easier to make the port opening this way. I'm going to have the top and bottom boards extend all the way to each side with having the sides sandwiched in between. When drawing the overlapping parts, I'll just have to estimate the squares into quarters since I will be using 3 quarters inch MDF. For the port opening, I'll be making it 2 inches, so I'll just count over 2 squares and draw a line. 
Now I will draw an X on the front board by lining up the corners. This will give us the center point. The cutout diameter for this sub is 9.13, so I'll count slightly more than 4.5, mark it, and then use a compass to draw a circle. You don't actually have to draw a circle, but at least draw a line for the full cutout diameter so you know it's gonna fit. Then I'll draw measurement lines, count the squares, and write the number next to them. This will all make sense in just a moment. On the next page, I will be drawing a top view. Start out by drawing a 14 by 20 rectangle, then add MDF panels so the sides overlap the front and back. Make sure to leave two squares on the front for the port opening. Now we just have to figure out the port length. Going back to the free subwoofer calculators, find the one for the slot port. I'll put two for the width, and looking back at the first page, the height will be 11.5. And now the box volume is gonna be 1.54 feet. I will be tuning this box to 35 hertz and pretty much the tuning frequency is when the box will hit free air resonance so basically if the bass gets to 35 hertz or below it'll sound more boomy and loud. Typically if you want more SPL you'll want to tune higher but if you want better sound quality it's better to tune lower. Also one thing to look at is the sub FS. This is when the subwoofer hits its resonant frequency so there would usually be no point to tune the box below this. So if I round up, we get a port length of about 29 inches. Rounding to a whole number will make it more simple and will only affect the tuning frequency by a small amount. A higher tuning frequency will give us a shorter port length and a lower frequency will give us a longer one. And of course, all the other parameters will have an impact on this as well. We could get a shorter length if we make the port thinner, but too thin and it might cause some unwanted port noise. From the middle of the port opening, I'll count out about 29 squares that would follow the port as it wraps around the back, which puts us right around here. I'll go ahead and draw the inner port wall so there's a constant two inches all the way through, then I'll draw the MDF board so the bigger one overlaps the smaller one. Once again, I'll draw measurement lines for everything including ones for the port walls. Moving on to the next page, I will be drawing the sides and the back. The sides extend all the way left to right, but the top will overlap them. Then the back will be similar to the front minus the port, and again I will be making measurement lines for these as well. Well, all we have left is to make a cut list, and this is where all those measurement lines will come in handy. Before doing this, I would recommend going back and checking all of your work by recounting the squares to make sure the drawings and measurements are correct. It would really suck to cut out a bunch of MDF to find out something doesn't fit right. To start out, I'll write down which board it is and the cutout dimensions for it. The front will be 16.5 by 11.5 inches. Back is 18.5 by 11.5. A side is 14 by 11.5. And it'll be the same for the other side as well. The top and bottom will both be 14 by 20 since everything will be sandwiched between them. The big port wall is 14.5 by 11.5. And the small port is 9.75 by 11.5. Well, now it's finally time to build this thing, so if you're interested to see how this sub box here all goes together, be sure to check out the next video in the playlist. Oh, and also I made a whole bunch more how-to videos on getting the bass bumping in your vehicle. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys later. Peace!